evening and welcome to the Career and Technical Education Find Your Path. Uh, we appreciate you being with us tonight for this Parent Academy presentation from um, the Career and Technical Education Department. Tonight we're going to talk about some programs that we offer in both middle school and high school. Um, we're going to first kind of address some of the middle school programs, but I want to say this. When you go to school every day, students, what do you envision your day looking like? Because that's what we're talking about. What do you want to learn every day? When you walk out of high school, we want you to be prepared for both college and for the workforce because eventually it's going to be the career pathway that you take. And you know, a lot of times that ends up being the career pathway that you're in for the next 30 or 40 years. So um, we want it to be the right pathway for you. So tonight we're going to talk about some of the things that we have available in Duval County. soon as this changes screens. There we go. So first one I want to talk to you about is at Kirby Smith Middle School. And at Kirby Smith, you see what these students do in the course of a day. You see students at the bottom launching rockets. That's the school right in the background. At the top, you see schools visiting, you see students visiting NASA. That is part of their challenge program that they have at Kirby Smith. And then also on the side, um, on the left side of the picture, you will see the students who are part of the gaming community that they have at uh, Kirby Smith. And Kirby Smith, again, is just one of the many schools that we have in Duval County that offer um, multiple IT programs and classes for students. Here you will see students who are both coding and students who are doing gaming software. In our middle schools, we have the opportunity for most students to do digital tools. And what digital tools does is it helps prepare students as they enter high school so that they are um, well informed about all the many things that they can do on a computer so that they can immediately start into some of the higher level CTE classes um, that get them prepared for computer science fields. The next one is from Mayport Middle School. And the picture that you see in the top left corner, that is actually the school. That is what it looks like when you walk into the school at, at Mayport. Mayport has a coastal science program. The coastal science program helps students to learn um, all of the different things that have to do with um, oceanography. Um, you see down here at the bottom, uh, some students are sitting behind an anchor. Um, part of the program and what they learn in there has to do with you know, crustaceans and things like that that you will see um, in marine life. Um, the students sort of to the middle on the left are working with some of our um, sea creatures that they handle while they're in that program. It, it is a fabulous program and it also is a pathway into agriculture. Um, and we have that program offered over at Frank H. Peterson when the students move on to high school. Here is one of the um, academies. I, I apologize for the bell. I am sitting in a high school. Um, this is the cosmetology program at APR and at Frank H. Peterson. So in this program, the one thing that's really unique about this program is when you walk out of there, you can have your Florida state license. In other words, you are ready to go to work for the rest of your life as a cosmetologist. Um, if you went through that program at FSCJ or at Virginia College or at one of those colleges, you could spend anywhere between eight and $15,000 getting that same license that you can earn at those two schools. So they learn esthetician, you see the nails going there, the curling, I mean, you learn everything you need to know about moving on to be a cosmetologist. And I will tell you that both of those programs are highly competitive um, for entering. This here is a picture of students from the welding program. Um, the gentleman that's down on the bottom right hand side, he is on a virtual welding machine. Um, it is a very cool instrument that helps to teach you how to hold the welder when you are both stick and MIG welding. Um, the students up above are visiting BEA um, shipyards out here at um, Blunt Island. Um, they hire welders continually and they are begging for more welders. So 
Um, there is definitely a market due to the shipyards here in Jacksonville. There is a huge market for welding. So um, this program is offered at A. Philip Randolph Career Academies. The next picture is our aviation program. Uh, this one particular is taken at Frank H. Peterson. Um, we do have aviation, we have an aviation program also at Revolt High School. And then around the county, we have um, different programs that do um, unarmed, I mean, unmanned flights. So in other words, flying of drones. Um, Emory Riddle has that program around different schools in our county and they offer advanced, um, dual enrollment classes. So the young man that you see in the top left is actually working on part of an airplane in our air, um, airplane maintenance program at Frank H. Peterson. Um, the students to the right are at the air traffic control center that they have at Frank H. Peterson. And then below you will see students who are actually flying planes um, with the simulators that they have in that program. It is a great program for you to earn your ground pilot certification, which means that once you pass that test, all you would need is, is flight time in order to have your private pilot's license. So. Again, great opportunity, two different schools, um, Frank H. Peterson and Reball High School both have that opportunity for you. And they can go straight from that program into the program at FSCJ. They have an outstanding uh, aviation program and they work on the board, the advisory board for Frank H. Peterson. Next is culinary arts. Now we have numerous culinary arts programs around the county. Um, Sandalwood, Rains, First Coast High School, Mandarin High School, uh, Inglewood all have culinary. Westside has a culinary program, Terry Parker. In the culinary arts programs, students can walk out of there earning a surf safe certificate or a pro start certificate, which means you're ready to run a restaurant. Um, this is actually a college bound program. A lot of times people don't realize that, but once the students get into the program and they're interested in becoming a chef, um, FSCJ has a, has a great program for students. Um, and also the colleges around, there's up there all over the place and they will come and recruit students to go to culinary school. The Culinary Institute is one of the, the big schools that recruits students. When you walk out of this program, you totally understand food and nutrition, um, how to cook and prepare food for a healthy life. So it's an outstanding program and it also gives you that certification that if if you were going to just you know apply for a job at, at a Chick-fil-A or, or at a Red Lobster or someplace and you have that certification, you're going to be top priority for getting hired. So um, even if it's not the career you want to go into being a chef, it still provides you that opportunity to be employable. The next picture talks is about the aviation program, I'm sorry, the automotive program at Frank H. Peterson. Uh, you see a student in the top picture, they do uh, paint and body work. Uh, students walk out of there with a certification to go to work at, at a paint and body shop. The students down in the far um, left-hand side are working in the automotive repair. And if you look kind of in the background, you will see that they have a full shop over at Frank H. Peterson. Um, they learn to do all of the general maintenance of a car while they are in that program. And also to the right, you see students underneath the hood of a car working and you see a young lady there. And that's intentional because in the time that I was there, we had a student come in with an old beat up truck that her grandfather had given her it needed engine repair and it needed paint and body work and when she walked out four years later it looked like a fully restored older pickup truck um, and she worked on it the four years that she was there with the skills that she learned in that program so um, we have lots of business partners um, key uh, automotive group nimnik automotive group uh, Hyundai are all on board with that academy and work and employ our students when they come out and they pay very well. The next photo is a picture from the Ag Science program uh, at Frank H. Peterson also. Um, those students in that can walk out with a 
agri-science certification or with vet assisting, which makes them prepared to go to work at any veterinary place. Um, those students do go and do volunteer work at the Humane Society. They also get jobs at Pet Creations. Um, so these students have a um, great experience while they're there. As you can see in the picture, you see chickens. They have goats, they have pigs, they have hamsters, they have rats, they have snakes, spiders, everything that you know they would need to learn everything about ag science and vet assisting is provided in that program over there. Um, it is a great opportunity. It is a college bound program. It tracks with the University of Florida. In fact, that's where the teachers have come from in that academy um, to prepare students to go in and to the ag science vet assisting area. This is a child development program. Students who walk out of this program actually have their CDA license and are ready to be employed um, through any of the daycare centers. Uh, it is um, a field where the daycare centers are constantly coming in and employing the students because they need them in the field and the fact that they already have their CDA license makes them extremely valuable. Um, we have a very busy advisory board, the Early Childhood Education Program at the University of North Florida also works with this program, um, as does Episcopal Services and other you know, large daycare centers around the city of Jacksonville. Um, the students actually work and interact with uh, children under the age of four. Um, and you can see them here reading to them and coloring with them. So the, the kids get the hands-on experience in that academy and again, walk out with their CDA license. <clears throat> the program here that you're seeing is a a robotics program. We have numerous robotics opportunities around our county. Um, this program does advanced manufacturing. They are tied in with Unison. Uh, students actually go over to Unison once a month and work in the field with Unison. The, um, the program, like I said, it operates under advanced um, manufacturing and robotics. So these students do compete in different robotics competitions. Um, they, they do underwater robotics. Uh, they have won uh, numerous tournaments and gone, had the opportunity to go to Hawaii and compete at one point. So um, again, around the county, we have a few programs that work with robotics. Um, this one here is located at Frank H. Peterson. This next is a picture. It is actually two academies that are working together um, the one in the bottom, you will see the Firefighter Academy at APR. Those students, when they walk out of that program, have completed the requirements for Firefighter 1 on the college level. So if they go to FSCJ's Firefighter Program, um, they only have to complete EMT and Firefighter 2. Um, they do get preference to that program through um, cooperation um, with the Better Jacksonville Plan in the city of Jacksonville and working to try and get students involved in firefighter. In the upper left-hand corner, those students are from the criminal justice program at APR and they are working on forensics of a crime scene. Um, last year, this team took first place in the forensic science competition. And when students walk out of the criminal justice program, they have a couple of options. They can do, telecommunications to be a 911 operator, or they can be an unarmed security guard through that program. So um, a couple of different opportunities there. I will tell you the students who go through um, APR's Public Service Academy, um, get the opportunity to do both firefighter and criminal justice um, while they're at school attending there. And here you will see uh, cybersecurity. So the cybersecurity program located in the Duval County Public School Systems right now um, that has the opportunity to also go through FSCJ in a dual enrollment capacity is at Andrew Jackson High School. Um, Andrew Jackson also has a medical skills program that they do through their sports science. So. Um, you can do medical skills at Mandarin High School, and at Mandarin, they just do the medical schools, and, and you have an opportunity to get your CMAA um, certification to work in doctor's office and transcribe records. 
Um, they also do an EKG certification at Mandarin High School. Um, at A. Philip Randolph, you can be in the medical and do an EMR program, um, which is a medical responder program. Uh, the program, I mean, the um, academy that you see here, this is our engineering academies. Um, we have a couple of those. One is at um, Sandalwood, there is one at Atlantic Coast High School, and there is one also at Lee High School. And I can tell you from personal experience, when I was at Lee High School, um, our engineering academy, every now and then after school, you would hear a hovercraft going down the hallway so um, that the engineering academy students had created from scratch. So um, they do a lot of cool things. Um, the uh, advisory board involves quite a few firms in Jacksonville, engineering firms. Uh, that works to give the students opportunities for internship and future employment and also for scholarships. And that is one of the things that you will see across a lot of our academies in Duval County is the opportunity from business partners for scholarships uh, for our students if they stay in the field. So um, engineering is a hot uh, topic right now. Um, multiple employers are looking for um, young students to get started in the engineering field and then um, bring them in and help fund their college so that they can come back and work for their firms. And as a part of being in the CTE programs, our students compete in Skills USA, FCCLA, um, the Professional Businessmen's Business Association, um, and those are just a few of the different competitions they go to. Uh, our culinary students go to Pro Start. And these competitions, they start out regional um, in Northeast Florida, then they go state level, then they go national level. And if a student is strong enough and wins their category at the national level, some of the competitions even have a, um, an international competition that the kids can go to. So I do know when I was at Frank H. Peterson, we had a student do a, uh, a web design page that won all the way up until he went to the national level. So and he won nationals and got a, a very nice scholarship to go to college. So um, <clears throat> we do encourage our students to um, compete and take their skills out. And you will see the students in this picture, a lot of them have medals around their neck where they one state competition. So um, this is a very important part to go out and display the skill set that you've taken um, while you've been in your CTE programs. So I put this up there. It says they did what they didn't tell you is that more CTE courses students take, the less likely they are to suffer periods of unemployment. So we realize that a lot of our students don't know for sure what they wanna do, but what our CTE classes do is it gives them an opportunity to investigate what they think they may want to do. So that when they go to college, it helps them to narrow down um, the field they wanna go in, which also means the possibility of maybe graduating in four years, which is always our goal. Um, but it, then again, sometimes it takes them into a field they find out that they love and they wanna stay in it. And then they get involved in apprenticeships and um, they can earn scholarships to help fund their colleges. So um, it is a very important part as they move forward. So in conclusion um, tonight, I, I, let me just say that it is a wonderful opportunity for your students to be involved in career and technical education programs. Somewhere in our city, we have a program for your child. One of the things that you will wanna look at is the magnet dates. Um, the last day for students to apply for magnet will be February 28th. So they need to be sure they get their application in um, and completed and you do that through focus. So um, please make sure that you look at it and let me encourage you to go on to the Duval County Public School website and you can look at any school, uh, high school, middle school, and it will tell you on their website what programs they offer. A lot of them have virtual tour set up so you can see what it looks like. So um, for students, um, 
what do you want your school day to look like? I mean, do you want to be in a culinary program where they're cooking or a cosmetology program where you're learning how to do hair or an automotive shop where you're learning how to change tires and brakes and change oil? And, or do you want to be in a computer class where you're learning how to be creative in some of our digital design classes? Um, you know, I've seen students, it's just, just amazing what they can accomplish and you walk out with Photoshop or Illustrator or Premiere Pro certification and you're ready to go work in that field. So um, it is unlimited, the things that we have available in Jacksonville and it's exciting when you start looking at those programs. And parents, I'll say this to you, if a student is excited about what they're doing, they're more apt to go to school and they're more apt to do better while they're in school. So. If your child has a passion about something, let them follow that passion. Doesn't mean they're gonna do it when they get out of high school, but it, it gets them excited about going to high school and the graduation rates in CTE programs are higher than they are in any other program. So um, we'd like to strongly encourage you to look at the programs we have around the county. So again, appreciate you being with us tonight. I am Kathy Barnes. My email address is barnesc at duvalschools.org. And if you have any questions, please feel free to send them to me. And thank you.